Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bourbon Bar. I'm Holden and today I'm bringing you guys a list of all the whiskeys that you guys should be searching for this allocation season. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, I'm sure most of you are, but it is now. Allocation season has arrived. The beginning of September to basically the end of December is when all of the important whiskeys come out. And if you guys are into whiskey the way I am, you know that this is your time to be going to the liquor stores. You got your Buffalo Trace and Tea Collections, your Pappy Van Winkles, those are the givens. But you also have things like the Four Roses LEs and any other limited edition that comes out from other distilleries, many, many, many of them are coming out during these last couple months of the year. That being said, I went through the list of released bottles and I decided which ones I think are going to be the ones I'm going to be looking for, which ones I think that you guys should be on the lookout for, and which ones I think um, might even be obtainable if you guys really try hard enough. So that being said, um, we're gonna run through the list. I'm gonna let you guys know which ones to look for and what exactly they are. Starting off with the first one on the list, which is Little Book Chapter 7. Now, this one is supposed to be out in August. Well, seeing as the recording date of this video is August 31st, uh, it's safe to say that they have missed the mark. Although, it is possible that I, the other places have seen it. I just haven't here in Wisconsin seen it yet. But the new Little Book Chapter 7, this one is a blend of a bunch of old whiskeys that they use in all the other Little Books, all combined it together. Um, it's got a lot of high age whiskey in it, a lot more high age than last year's release, which I know some people got pissed off about because of the younger whiskey. However, uh, I did have last year's release and I thought it was really good, or at least decent enough. I mean, sitting right up there, I could pull it out and drink it right now and I could really enjoy it. I liked it, but for the price tag, people weren't as thrilled. I do think, however, that this year, being at this whiskey coming up is gonna have some of those really good little books from back in the day, along with like some of the stuff, the unique stuff that came out of this last little book, all blended together, and it's got age statement, it's got quality, it's got class, Little Book Chapter 7 I think is going to be a good one, and I think that you guys should probably keep an eye out for it, because I have a feeling it's going to come very, very soon. Moving on. Since August is almost over, that is the only one that I have for August that's supposed to be released in August. However, uh, I am moving into September. <clears throat> However, I am moving into September now, and September is probably the biggest month of them all. Um, with It's either Buffalo Trace and Tea Collection or the Pappy comes out in September, but September is very important. However, those aren't gonna be the ones that I'm looking for because we're never really gonna find that on the shelf at retail. It's just not something that you can really look forward to. You can definitely try for raffles, but that's not me. I've never won a single raffle in my entire life, and I don't know if I ever will. However, uh, in September, there's another one that's going to be released that is called a Midwinter Nights Dram. Boom. As you guys can see, I got last year's Midwinter Nights Dram Act 10. Now, the reason I'm bringing up Midwinter Nights Dram Act 11 this year is because seemingly last year, they were a bit easier to find. Uh, compared to two years ago, the Act 9, I actually looked decently hard for the Midwinters and I couldn't find one. And then this year, uh, I did look really hard and I did find it. But then after I found it, I found it like a three or four more times, just sitting around. And I think the problem with it is that it just got too damn expensive. But there are still a lot of people out there who have never had the first Midwinners and they're gonna wanna try it. Also, I'm not sure what the MSRP is gonna be this year for Midwinners. Hopefully they lowered it, but I'm not sure if they did. Um, they probably very likely did not. Uh, but yeah, I think Midwinters is a solid whiskey if you guys are into that sort of thing. It's definitely one that some people are going to be wanting to try, and I have a feeling you probably will be able to find one this year, so be on the lookout for that coming in September. Alright guys, the next one on this list, also coming in September, is one that I'm not going to spend too much time on because you guys already know it comes out, we all know it comes out, we all know that we're going to want to buy it because we all know it's going to be good. The next up on the list is Elijah Craig Grow Proof, C923. That's it, that's all I have to say. If you find it, kudos to you, but I don't need to dwell on it anymore. Moving on, okay, the next one on the list. Ooh, the next one on the list. If I could pray to the bourbon gods and they could bless me with one allocated bottle this year, I want the Maker's Mark Cellar Aged, please. Please, 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 the Maker's Mark Cellar Age. Now, if you guys aren't aware of what this is, Maker's Mark came out with an 11 and 12 year old blend that is a limited edition for this year. Uh, it's kind of their first thing since stopping the license plate series, some people have called it, um, but that's like the BRTs, FAEs, and the BEPs, um, which were their like barrel 
rotation, playing with, or barrel stave, experimental, whatever. So anyway, um, so this is kind of like the first big LE that Maker's Mark has put out in a while. And I've heard from very credible sources, um, I haven't heard, I've seen, uh, Fred Minnick, I'm just gonna name him because you all know who he is, loves, loves, loves this whiskey. And if Fred Minnick likes it that much, I can only imagine how good it actually is. So when I say that I really want to find a Maker's Mark seller's age, I'm not lying with you guys. I want it, and I want it now. And the MSRP, I believe, is around $150. Will you guys be able to find it for that? It's not likely. I'm not sure how rare this stuff is gonna be since this is the first time Maker's Mark is coming out like that, something with something like that. However, uh, their license plate batches were somewhat easy to find if you looked hard enough. I've gotten um, two of them in the last couple in the last two years. So I pro I've been about 50-50 on Maker's Mark releases. However, if I could get my hands on this seller age, I would be more than ecstatic. So if you guys see one and you find an extra and you're willing to send it my way, I may just make it worth your time. But that being said, we'll move on. Also, I didn't have this one on my list, but I figured it's good to be a special mention. Um, if you guys are a fan of Dixon Deadman's releases that he's been putting out, his uh, 2XO series, starting with the Phoenix Blend and the Innkeeper's Blend, um, he's also coming out with his next 2XO, which I'm not entirely sure of the blend name of it, but it is another 2XO blend, probably MSRP around $100. However, uh, He's also putting out a, a barrel stave or a, a, a different barrel property series. And the first one I believe is American Oak. So he's putting out an American Oak bottle. It's gonna be MSRP of about $50, I think. And he's gonna have a bunch of different like barrel finishes or types of barrels that they're finished in. Um, and he's gonna have a whole line of it available that you can buy and you can compare side to side. I think it's really cool. He is 2XO, so it's probably a, a separate finishing, but it'll be a nice way to compare oak. I just saw that on Instagram earlier today, and uh, I just figured I'd mention it because it sounds like something I'd be interested in and something you guys might be interested in as well. The last one that will be released in September that I'm excited about, and I don't know if I'll find one, but I'm hoping I do, is a 10-year-old Parker's Heritage rye. Um, guys, Parker's Heritage, uh, its track record has been great. I've heard so many people talk about good things from Parker's Heritage, and quite frankly, the one Parker's Heritage I have, this guy right here, is some of my favorite whiskey on the shelf, and I shit you not, like, I love that whiskey. So if I have the opportunity to buy a 10-year-old rye from Parker's Heritage, uh, I'm gonna do it. That's just the way it is. It might be a little bit expensive, it might be out of my price range, but I'm gonna make it work, because that's Parker's Heritage, and that stuff's good but that being said that is the last one of september now we're moving on to october guys october is spooky season and what's better to have during spooky season if not for whiskey because it's getting cold it's time for whiskey and one whiskey in particular if you guys are into something sweet and i'm not talking about a trick here i am talking about a treat the whiskey in october is going to be angel's envy cast strength rye angel's envy cast strength rye Okay, I know guys, rye for the Angel's Envy is a hit or miss for a lot of people. Some of them think it's too sweet. Some of them love how sweet it is. How sweet it is to be loved by you. Do, 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 do. Anyway, besides the point, Angel's Envy is coming out with a cask strength version of their rye. As you guys know, behind my Elijah Craig Ryder Cup, watch for the review coming out, is an Angel's Envy cast strength bourbon that I had picked up last year and I loved it. Angel's Envy, they can make some decent stuff in their normal whiskeys. However, their cast strengths have admittedly stood out from their mainstays for a long time and everyone has noticed. It's just, Angel's Envy tends to make really good cast strength products and Angel's Envy rye, very sweet. But imagine what if it's at cast strength? Is it less sweet? Is it more full bodied? Is it more sweet? It's, a whirlwind of things that could happen with it, but I am excited. So that being said, guys, in October, make sure you guys are looking out for the Angel's Envy Cast Strength Ride. All right, everybody, last but definitely not least on our list is the one in October that I gotta say, I'm pretty damn excited for. And this is one that I hope every single one of you guys are gonna be able to find and buy if you want it. And that is Old Forester. 1924. 
Old Forester 1924. It is a 10-year-old bourbon, and I'm not sure of the proof of it, but it's a 10-year-old bourbon. I don't know what else you need to know. Old Forester is coming out with a 1924, the part of their Whiskey Row series. That is the Old Forester 1920, the Old Forester 1910. Uh, there's like 1987 or something like that, 1870 something. Old Forester has got four bottles in the Whiskey Row. Bald and Bond, um, not Bottled and Bond, I don't know what it's called. I forget, I don't even have that one. Uh, then they have a Double Oak series, that's 1910, and a Cast Strength in 1920. The only thing they're really missing out of their killer lineup is one that's age stated. Well, what better way to fix that than coming out with a 10 year old whiskey, age stated at 10 years old from Old Forester, that is readily available on the shelves. Now, when Old Forester 1920 came out, they did come out and then it sold out and didn't come back for a while. I'm hoping that isn't gonna be the case with this 10 year old, but I guess we're gonna to have to wait and find out. All I gotta say guys is if you see the Old Forester 1924, you should definitely, definitely buy it because when has Old Forester let us down? They've always made good stuff. It's always been fantastic, but it's always also been readily available. Except for birthday bourbon. Please help me find that one too. But uh, it's always been readily available, sitting on shelves, ready for you to buy, especially for a good price point. I want Old Forester 1924, but it's coming out in October. So that being said, guys, that is a list of everything that I saw that I thought would be worth buying now, there are some other ones that I'm sure I'll probably get the opportunity to buy, and let's be honest, I probably will buy them. Actually, one that I got that's not on this list is this Lux Row Double Single Barrel. It's a four grand double single barrel. Um, but I already have it, and I'm gonna be bringing you guys a review very soon, so make sure you guys are staying tuned for that. Um, but that would've been on the list too today, but I already found it. But as far as the ones that I've seen and don't already have, uh, that's the complete list guys and if you guys have enjoyed it, please hit the like button and also if you're not subscribed Feel free to do so. I'm here all the time drinking whiskey. I live stream on Tuesdays and I make videos Hopefully on Saturdays fingers crossed that I can keep a schedule coming out for you guys But yeah subscribe and also leave me a comment Let me know which ones you're most excited about or if there's any that weren't on my list that you think need to be on my list because I love whiskey and I want to hear your guys' opinion. So that being said, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next class.